All right, so in this lesson for MEAP 20S, we're going to be looking at exponent laws. All right, this is outcome A3. Now, in section 4.6 of the textbook, this is where all of the exponent laws are combined. It all comes together, and then we just get to have fun with all of the laws all together. Let's take a second to just remind ourselves what the laws are. So if I have the same base, okay, and they've got different exponents, what do I do in order to, how do I combine them? Since, since they have the same base, I can add them together. I could add the exponents. All right. Now, what if I have the same base and then I have them dividing? So I've got a to the power of m dividing by a to the power of n. What do we do to the exponents? We subtract them. a to the power of m minus n. Now, what if we had a to the power of m, and then we have that raised to the power of n? What do we do? We multiply them. Yeah, we multiply the exponents together. Whoops, that's supposed to be an n. OK, that looks bad. I'm going to try to erase it without it looking worse. Oh, no, it's looking worse. Oh, what a disaster. Okay, so what is this? Let's go back to what this is called. What is this called? Product of power. Okay, what is this called? Quotient of power. And then what do we call this one? Power to power of power. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, suppose I've got a over n. Oh, a. So, oh, bleh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, suppose we have a over b, and all of it is to the power of n. How do we apply this one? Yeah, a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. So everything gets the a applied, the exponent applied to it. So how about if we had a times b and both of those are in brackets and it's to the power of n? How do we figure that one out? a to the power of n times b to the power of n. So basically when the exponent is outside of the bracket, it gets applied to everything inside, okay? And the same thing happened here, right? The exponent was outside of the bracket, it gets applied to everything that's in the bracket. And then our last lesson, I believe, yes, last lesson was the first time that we saw the negative exponents, right? So if I have x to the power of negative n, how can I write that with a positive exponent? 1 over x to the power of n. Okay. And then um, there's one more, I think, right? If I have fractional exponents, let's see if I have enough room here. So if I have a to the power of m over n, what does that equal? That is, the n tells me which root it goes to, and then I have a to the power of m. All right. Okay, so let's have a look at these, and it's asking us to simplify by writing as a single power and explain your reasoning. So what I mean by that is tell me which law you're using, which, which uh, exponent law you're using. So here we've got the same base, so which law are we going to use? We're going to use the product of power. Okay, so we add the exponents since they have the same base. 2 plus negative 7, and that equals 0 0.8 to the power of 
negative 5. Now, could we please write it as a positive exponent? So then we need to use this one here. So we write 1 over 0 0.8 to the power of 5. <laughs> okay. All right. Now the next one. Which am I going to use for that there? This is power of power. Okay. So how do I how do I deal with these? What do I do? I multiply them. So I'm going to have negative four over five to the power of negative 6 divided by negative 4 over 5 to the power of negative 20. Okay, now what am I going to use in order to combine these two? They have the same base. I've got a divide here, so this is going to be quotient of powers. Okay, so I've got the same base. So what do I do with the exponents? I subtract them. So we end up getting negative 6 minus negative 20 in the exponent, which gives us negative 4 over 5, that's our base, to the power of 14. Okay, and then this is our final answer. All right. Now part C, what rule, what power law can we use to combine that? This is power to power. Power of power. And then, so what do I do to those exponents? Multiply them. So what's negative 3 times 5? Negative 5. So 1.5 to the power of negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. So I get 15 here, and then over 1.5 to the power of 5. Okay. So now, what am I going to use to evaluate this part? Power of, or quotient of powers, mm, here. Quotient of powers. So what do I do with these exponents here? I subtract them. So 1.5 to the power of 15 minus 5. And that's 1.5 to the power of 10. Okay. Now, for question D, I want you to look really careful. It's hard to see this negative. There's a negative right there. The printing just makes it look like it's a long denominator. But it's actually 9 to the power of 5 over 4 times 9 to the power of negative 1 over 4 over 9 to the power of 3 over 4. Okay? Just to make that clear. All right. <coughs> So what am I going to use first to combine those two? Product of power. So I have 9 to the power of 5 over 4 plus negative a quarter. Okay. 
So what does that work out to? 9 to the power of, I've got the same denominator, so that makes it easy. 4 over 4. So that's just 1, right? Okay, so I've got 9 to the power of 1 over 9 to the power of 3 over 4. Okay, uh, what law, what, what can I do to combine this still? Power of quotient or quotient of power. Okay, so what do I do to the exponents? 9, and then I've got 1 minus 3 over 4. So what, so now I need to simplify that. So instead of writing 1 minus 3 over 4, what, sh how do, what do I need to do to this one? I need to make a common denominator. So I get 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4. So what is that? All right, so that's 1 over 4. So then my final answer is 9 to the power of 1 over 4. Okay? All right. Let's move on to number two. Number two, more of the same. Simplify, explain your reasoning. So let's keep those power laws in our minds, close to our hearts, and simplify and just state the power law that we use each time. So I need to organize the M's together. and organize the ends together, okay? And that's what I'm going to combine. How do I combine these two? Add the exponents. How do I combine these two? Add the exponents. So which law am I using in both cases? Product of power. So m to the power of 4 plus 2 times n to the power of negative 2 plus 3. So I end up with m to the power of 6 and n to the power of 1. And there's my final answer. So when you're giving me your final answer, when you're writing your final answer, you always want to make sure that your exponents are positive. <coughs> okay. So if you ever end up with a negative exponent somewhere, you need to try to use that powers of negative exponent, right, to switch it, to make it a positive exponent. <coughs> All right. So let's have a look at this question here. If ever you see fraction like that, so you've got 6 over 14, you want to ask yourself, can I reduce that? And that's the first thing you want to do. So can we reduce 6, o 6 over 14? Sure. sure we can. What does it become? 3 over 7. Okay. Now, I've got x to the power of 4 over x. So which law am I going to use to deal with that? quotient of power. So that's 4 minus 1 in my exponent for the x's. And then my y's. What am I going to do to simplify my y's? Same law, right? Negative 3 minus 2. Okay. So let's simplify and see what we end up having. 3 <coughs> over 7. And then I've got x to the power of 3 and then y to the power of negative 5. Hmm. What do you notice? I have a negative exponent there. Now, the negative exponent only applies to the y, <coughs> correct? So that's the only thing that's going to move from the numerator to the denominator, and then that exponent becomes positive. All right. 3 over 7, and then I've got x to the power of 3, and then y to the power of 5. <coughs> So that's what we end up with. Sound good? Okay, awesome. Okay.
Okay. So number three, kind of more of the same, just a little bit of a different type of question. Uh, we need to simplify this again. So what laws are we using? What rules are we using? So I've got the 3 over 2 over here. So that must mean it applies to everything inside the bracket. Okay? So 25 goes to the power of 3 over 2. What law is that, by the way? Power of a product. Okay? And then I've got a to the power of 4. Now that is also to the power of 3 over 2. And then I have b, which is to the power of 2, but then now it's also to the power of 3 over 2. Okay. Now I need to simplify and do some evaluating. Now since I have a number here, I can evaluate this number. Now, do you recall what a divide by 2 means when it's in the exponent? Square root. Okay. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 25, and then that's going to be to the power of 3. Remember I said make it smaller before you make it bigger, because it's, then your numbers stay small. They don't get gigantic. So do the square root first. And so then this becomes 5 to the power of 3, and then finally it becomes 125. Okay, now that just deals with our 25 to the power of 3 over 2. How about a to the power of 4 times 3 over 2? What do we do in this case? Hmm. Multiply, see, we're, we're, we've got a variable. So all we need to do is just multiply the exponents together. So we've got a to the power of 12 over 2. And then same thing here, combine those. And you've got b to the power of 6 over 2. Okay. So now can I reduce this? It becomes a to the power of 6. This is b to the power of 3. And then I just need to write it down in my final line. And that's my final answer. Do you agree? Okay, awesome. Thank you for agreeing. Okay, now this question here. More of the same, really, right? So I've got x to the power of 3, y to the power of negative 3 over 2, x to the power of negative 1, y to the power of 1 half. So notice I've got x's here, and I've got y's here. So I can rewrite it so that, since they're all multiplying with each other, I can just rewrite it so that the x's are next to each other and the y's are next to each other. It's sometimes easier to see if you do that. So what law am I going to use here? And what law am I going to use here? Product of power in both cases, right? So what do I do with the exponents? I add them. So x to the power of 3 plus negative 1, y to the power of negative 3 over 2 plus 1 half. So for here, for my x, I get x to the power of 2. And what do I get for my y? y to the power of negative 1. It, it would, it's negative 2 over 2 which reduces to 1. All right. Now, am I allowed to leave my answer like this? No, I want to write it so that my exponents are all positive. So I have x squared over y. And then this is my final answer. OK? All right. So I'm going to hit pause on this and I'm going to let you guys try the next couple of questions, okay? I'm actually going to end this video and I'm going to let you guys 
try these next couple of questions on your own, and then that's where the next one's going to start, okay?